Perspectives and Approaches of IHRM. Hello student, welcome to the lecture on Perspectives and Approaches of IHRM and after this lecture, we will be able to learn the following objectives. Understand the approaches of IHRM, discuss the path to global status, describe the sales subsidiary, understand the Pearl Mutters model, explain the cross-culture management introduction. Let's start with the perspectives and approaches of IHRM. The HRM function develops and motivates employees to create skills, knowledge and innovation needed for the firm to compete with foreign companies. An MNC must design HR systems that balance the needs of both local responsiveness and global integration which is a balance that has implication for performance. Yet Taylor clarifies that some HR policies might be very context specific while others can be context generalized and accordingly can be used successfully in other contexts. The need for human resource specialists to adopt an increasingly international orientation in their functional activities is widely acknowledged and becoming ever clearer. Human resource management is resource center directed mainly at management needs for human resources to be provided and deployed. HRM is defined in structural terms as a discrete department or function of management. Approaches to International Human Resource Management Corporate management philosophy is an important issue because it decides how a firm views the world in relation to itself and how it wants to manage human resources in different countries. The HR manager at international level must not only select people with skills but also employees who can mix with the organization's culture. Personal management and HRM do not necessarily refer to different sets of management activities, rather they complement each other while emphasizing different approaches to the tasks of managing human resources. Generally, the subject matter of IHRM is covered under three headings Cross-Culture Management, Comparative HRM, the IHRM in Multinational Context International HRM and its more recent strategic derivative SIHRM examines the way organizations manage the human resources across these different national contexts Cross-Cultural Management Frederick Winslow Taylor thinks that management is to command others to use the best way that can be used to work. Herbert A. Simon gave management a definition of decision making. Henry Fail thinks that management is a kind of human activity that all organizations have. It consists of five elements, planning, organizing, directing, coordinating and controlling. Management is the process of achieving established organizational goals by effective planning, organizing, directing, coordinating and controlling of the organization owned resources in a particular environment. Problems exist between expatriates and local employees and how to manage cross-cultural human resource management. Five culture dimension theory is applied by Professor Great Hosteed to analyze the differences in culture between countries so that to conclude problems which may exist in the case company due to those differences. An awareness of cultural differences is therefore an essential part of an international HR manager's brief. The normal HRM activities such as recruitment and selection, training and development, reward and performance appraisal may all be affected by cultural values and practices in the respective host countries. Cross-cultural human resource management brings trust enhancement between people, brings to improvement if it is regarded as important. Comparative human resource management the distinction between comparative HRM and IHRM was clearly made by Bosold. Comparative HRM, CHRM explores the extent to which HRM differs between different countries. HRM is a term with widely disputed definitions. 
many books and articles have attempted to pinpoint its meaning. The concept of HRM itself originates in and builds on a particular view of the world, a view initially from the USA. It is believed HRM to be a moral and antisocial, unprofessional, reactive, uneconomic and ecologically destructive. The bulk of work in the CHRM field has concentrated on the nature and impact of institutional differences between countries, consideration of which HRM practices are more or less culturally sensitive, and an empirical examination of patterns of convergence or divergence in HRM practices across national borders. The IHRM in multinational contexts. The IHRM has traditionally examined the way in which international organizations manage their human resources across these different national contexts. The organization that manages people in different institutional, legal and cultural circumstances has to be aware not only of what is allowed and not allowed in the different nations and regions of the world, but also of what makes for cost-effective management practices. Organizations that address IHRM have to deal not just with a variety of practices, but also with a range of policy and even strategy issues. The IHRM explores how MNEs manage the demands of ensuring that the organization has an international coherence in and cost-effective approach to the way it manages its people in all the countries it covers while at the same time ensuring that it is responsive to the differences in assumption and in what works from one location to another. The Path to Global Status most firms pass through several stages of organizational development as the nature and size of their international activities grow. Organizational structures change typically due to the strain imposed by growth and geographical spread, the need for improved coordination and control across business units, the constraints imposed by host government regulation on ownership and equity. The concept of an evolutionary process is useful in illustrating the organizational adjustment required of a firm moving along the path to multinational status. International division. This step may be considered small if the firm is already assembling the product abroad to take advantage of cheap labor or to save shipping costs or traffics. For example, alternatively, the firm may have a well-established export and marketing program that enables it to take advantage of host government incentives or counter host government controls on foreign imports by establishing a foreign production facility. The subsidiary managers report to the head of the international division and there may be some informal reporting directly to the various functional heads. The role of corporate HR staff is primarily concerned with expatriate management, though there will be some monitoring of the subsidiary HR function, formally through the head of the international division. Pukik suggests that initially corporate HR activities are confined to supervising the selection of staff for the new international division and expatriate managers perform a major role in identifying employees who can direct the daily operations of the foreign subsidiaries supervising transfer of manager and technical know-how communicating corporate policies and keeping corporate HQ informed. Global Product or Area Division Now let's talk about a global product. The international division becomes overstretched, making effective communication and efficiency of operation difficult. Frankly, tension will emerge between the parent company headquarters and its subsidiaries stemming from the need for national responsiveness at the subsidiary unit and global integration imperatives at the parent headquarters. The need for more centralized global integration by the headquarters comes from having multinational customers, global competitors and the increasingly rapid flow of information and technology and from the quest for large volume for economies of sale. Within the human resource function, the development of managers able to operate in international environments generally becomes a new imperative. As the MNE grows and the trend toward a global perspective accelerates, it increasingly confronts the think global at local paradox. Global matrix structure. 
A matrix organization structure involves horizontal, vertical and diagonal flows of responsibilities. Mathematically, arrangement of anything by rows and columns is called matrix structure. In a matrix organization, the products or projects may be the column element while the horizontal or row element might be the functional lines of production, marketing, etc. It is a combination of two or more different structures. Thus, in a global matrix organization structure, a foreign subsidiary reports to more than one group, namely product or project, functional or geographic. The global matrix structure contains simultaneous intersecting differentiation bases with employees reporting to functional and product managers simultaneously. In the matrix structure, the multinational is attempting to integrate its operations across more than one dimension. The hierarchy. This structural form was proposed by Heplin, a distinguished Swedish international management researcher, and recognizes that a multinational may have a number of different kinds of centers apart from that traditionally referred to as headquarters. A heterarchy is a system of organization replete with overlap, multiplicity, mix, ascendancy, and or divergent but coexisting patterns of relation. In a hierarchical MNE, control is less reliant on the top to bottom mechanism of previous hierarchical modes and more on normative mechanisms such as the corporate culture and a widely shared awareness of central goals and strategies. Hedlund recognized that the hierarchy demands skillful and experienced personal as well as sophisticated reward and punishment systems in order to develop the normative control mechanism necessary for effective performance. Transnational Network Firm Classic contribution in the economics of multinational corporations have consolidated this view. Host countries and foreign subsidiaries play a role almost exclusively in the adoption and diffusion of centrally created technology. The term transnational has been coined to describe an organizational form that is characterized by an interdependence of resources and responsibilities across all business units regardless of national boundaries. Foreign subsidiaries and decentralized R&D units play a key role in this process of knowledge accumulation and transfer. Host country based R&D laboratories also play a key role in this process. Local units involved in innovative activities must be endowed with a high degree of autonomy in order effectively to develop external networks of collaboration with local contexts and to extract useful knowledge from them. As autonomy increases, centrifugal effects can overcome centripetal ones and units may be induced to diminish their contribution to and use of the network. The multinational as a network Interaction between headquarters and each subsidiary is likely to be dyadic, taking place between various actors at many different organizational levels and covering different exchanges, the outcome of which will be important for effective global performance. MNEs are loosely coupled political systems rather than tightly bounded homogeneous, hierarchically controlled systems. The management of a multi-centered network organization is complex. Apart from the intra-organizational network, each subsidiary also has a range of external relationships. The management of both the intra-organizational and inter-organizational spheres and of the total integrated network is crucial to global corporate performance. Five significant dimensions of MNCs include delegation of decision-making, authority to appropriate units and levels, Geographical dispersal of key functions across units in different countries, delivering of organizational levels, debureaucratization of formal procedures, differentiation of work responsibility, and authority across the network as subsidiaries. Role of human resource Human resource managers are well positioned to play an instrumental role in helping the organization achieve its goals of becoming a socially and environmentally responsible firm, one which reduces its negative and enhances its positive impacts on society and the environment. 
Further, human resource HR professionals and organization that perceive successful corporate social responsibility CSR as a key driver of their financial performance can be influential in realizing on that objective. The HR can facilitate the development of processes and systems. However, employee engagement is ultimately a shared responsibility. Under the HR department's remit, are the following roles the process of recruiting suitable candidates for the organization identifying and meeting the training needs of existing staff ensuring employee welfare and employee relations are positive ensure the working environment is safe for employees raising awareness of current workplace legislation the human resources department also covers five key roles executive role in this role, the HR department are viewed as a specialist in the areas that en encompasses human resources or people management. Audit role. In this capacity, the HR department will check other departments and the organization as a whole to ensure all HR policies such as health and safety, training, staff appraisal, etc. are being carried out in accordance with the company's HR policy. Facilitator role. In this role, the HR department helps or facilitates other departments to achieve the goals or standards as laid out in the HR policies of the organization. This will involve training being delivered for issues that arise in the areas relating to people management. Consultancy role. The HR department will advise managers on how to tackle specific managing people issues professionally. Service role. In this capacity, the HR department is an information provider to raise awareness and inform departments and functional areas on changes in policy. Implications for human resource management policy Effective HR managers must develop business knowledge, HR content expertise, influence skills and personal credibility. The HR managers need to become more knowledgeable about the legal environment in all parts of the world that are rapidly expanding. The HR manager must comprehend several local business practices, employment laws and HR practices, communicate effectively across nationalities and gain the trust of individuals with a wide range of backgrounds and even languages. Developing and implementing human resources policies are essential HR responsibilities. The importance of human resource policy development cannot be overlooked. Policies regarding recruitment and selection are the framework for making decisions in the hiring process. Fundamental to create a recruitment and selection of policy is an understanding of and appreciation for the laws that underlie fair employment practices. The organization and its workforce benefit from training and development policies. Training and development policies are important for demonstrating company interest in employees, developmental needs and preparing existing leadership for taking on more responsible and higher level position as part of the succession plan. The implications of workplace safety policies cannot be overstated. Employees are comfortable with company policies designed to protect their well-being. Safety policies range from guidelines for operating complex machinery to handling incidents of workplace violence. Major aspects where the human resources have to look and implicate the policies for the employees and also for the organization are workforce planning, induction management, performance management, compensation and benefits, attendance management, leave management, benefits management, overtime management, play slip distribution, timesheet management, employee information or skill management, employee survey, exist interviews and process, health and safety and many more. Perlmutter's model Let's understand the model given by Perlmutter, who came out with the concept of four styles of managing abroad. Perlmutter's three organizational structures are Ethno Center, overseas operations are managed primarily to protect the company's competitiveness in the home market. Communication and information is top down, and all strategic decisions are steered from corporate headquarters. Subsidiaries sell products designed and manufactured by parent with little or no local control. Polycentric Overseas subsidiaries take more responsibility adapting designs and manufacturing products to meet local needs. 
Subsidiaries are managed as independent units with minimum interference from headquarters. Geocentric. All units of the organization are in close communication. Global market segments are defined and technology is transferred rapidly to sell more or less the same product worldwide, maximizing economies of sale both in production and R&D. Ethnocentric Global Technology Units EGTU Frankly, EGTUs cannot exist since in an ethnocentric organization, a global technology unit is based at the headquarters and although simultaneous introduction of new technology may occur to capitalize on global scale, the product is primarily designed to meet the needs of the home market. Ethnocentric Corporate Technology Units ECTU Corporate technology units are quite compatible with ethnocentric organization. The ECTU is located in the headquarters and is focused on securing the long-term development of new technology or evaluating applicability of alternative technologies and processes for the parent corporation. Polycentric Global Technology Units PGTU to operate global technology units in a polycentric organization would be very difficult since the various local organizations are accustomed to making adaptation to fit their local markets. Polycentric Corporate Technology Units PCTU Corporate technology units in polycentric companies operate as suppliers to the local subsidiaries. Probably located at the headquarters, the PCTU would sell to or take assignments from the local R&D units to evaluate new technologies or materials. Geocentric Global Technology Units GGTU. Global technology units capitalize on the open communication between subsidiaries around the world to maximize global scales in R&D, manufacturing and marketing. The geocentric corporation's ability to leverage a global base of technical know-how and human resources gives a clear competitive advantage. Geocentric Corporate Technology Units GCTU In a geocentric organization, corporate technology can be located in a single unit anywhere in the world or it may be comprised of several different units carrying the responsibility for different areas of technology. Summary now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. The organizational context which IHRM activities take place, different structural arrangements have been identified as the firm moves along the path to multinational status from export department to, to more complex varieties such as the matrix, hierarchy, transnational and network, control and coordination aspects, formal and informal mechanism were outlined with emphasis on control through personal networks and relationships and control through corporate culture, drawing out HRM implications. How international growth affects a firm's approach to HRM, firms vary from one another as they go through the stages of international development and react in different ways to the circumstances they encounter in the various foreign markets. There is a wide variety of matches between IHRM approaches, organizational structure and stage of internationalization. Stages of development and organizational forms should not be taken as normative. Research does suggest a pattern and a process of internationalization, but firms do vary in how they adapt to international operations. Through the approach taken in this chapter, it has been able to demonstrate that there is an interconnection between IHRM approaches and activities and the organizational context and that HR managers have a crucial role to play. In order to better perform this role, it would seem important that HR managers understand the various international structural options along with the control and coordination demands imposed by international growth.